Hello everyone! Today I'm going to draw this seahorse using Procreate. We'll first form a shape of a seahorse and then color inside. So I guess rather than drawing a seahorse itself, this tutorial will be more about creating a design with a silhouette of a seahorse. The apps we'll use today are Procreate and Photoshop Sketch by Adobe. This app is free, but to briefly explain what it is, it's an app for creating sketches. So you could use it for sketching, creating rough sketches, and even for professional drawing as you can see. What I like about this app is that it's great for watercolor painting and I enjoy it a lot. So that's what we will be using today. We'll create a design making use of both Procreate and Photoshop Sketch. I think you'll enjoy the two apps working in harmony during the design process. On a side note, Adobe announced the launch of the new drawing software a couple of days ago. So beyond what I have to show you today, we can all look forward to the new Adobe Fresco soon enough. About this app, it's an app where you can draw both vector and raster illustration. As some of you know, I drew Spider-Man with Apple Draw recently. Adobe Fresco will be like a combination of Adobe Draw and Photoshop Sketch. Adobe used to call the app Project Gemini until a little while ago, but it will be named as Adobe Fresco when it will be released. There have been rumors around the release of this app for a long time, which always ended up being false. But it seems like this time we may finally see that, and I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to Photoshop as well. As previously mentioned, you'll see how the Photoshop Sketch app can be used to create a design like this one. Given that Fresco will be released soon, knowing Photoshop Sketch will make transitioning to Fresco easier later on. First, we'll draw a silhouette of a seahorse. I got this picture after searching Google Images. Your picture can be anything, so choose one for your reference. Open Procreate and keep it on the side. We'll start by creating a canvas. Open a screen size canvas and this time set it vertical. It can be adjusted later too. Open your camera roll on the right using a split view and import a photo from area here. Once imported, make sure that the arrow at the top is kept blue in color and we'll start transforming the image. You could roll over, distort, or rotate your image right here, so let us position the image like so. I always draw the object facing left. The same mid foot was used when I drew Spider-Man before too. But ultimately, it's up to you, so just draw however you feel comfortable with. Lower the opacity of this image first to around 10%. Then add a layer on top while we'll be drawing lines in black. Regarding the brush we'll use this time, for those who bought Amity ink brushes, there should be one called Line Pen, so please use that one. And for those who don't have it, there's a pen called Studio Pen by default, which is pretty similar to the brush mentioned, so I think you could draw using that. We'll then start tracing the outline or the edge of this seahorse in black. It doesn't need to be perfect at all, so just trace roughly. And I'm going to fast forward a bit here, but before that, I kind of want to have a little chat here. I hope you guys don't mind. About my previous video where I revealed my face a little bit, I got a lot of comments, and I just want to thank all of you guys. I felt like I got a little closer to you all. 
You know, I got many comments saying that they want to see my face more often. And it's not like I don't want to show my face or anything, but there is a reason why I don't do it, and that's because I always film right after I jump out of my bed in the morning. And you know, I look pretty bad right after I wake up, not something worth seeing. So that's why I almost never show my face. I could show it, and I don't mind doing that, but I feel like that would discourage me to upload my videos often. And I assume most of you guys are here to learn and get inspired about art or design on the iPad, so I want to keep it as my top priority. But anyway, I will show my face whenever I feel like it again sometime in the future, but for now, I will keep my style. I'm not a morning person, but my day is usually like I get up, film in the morning, then get some exercise, go to work, come home, and then edit my videos. Being a YouTuber isn't easy at all, but I enjoy it and that's why I can keep doing it, I guess. Thank you though for always giving me your support and I will reveal myself sometime again soon, so please look forward to it. Alright, so as you can see, once you roughly cut out the shape and color in black, you may want to adjust the shape a bit more, so when doing that, go to the item option at the top and select warp. Then trace while keeping the push button at the bottom left selected to make some slight adjustment as you can see. I name it a warp and wipe function. You can polish the belly or the tail of this seahorse by using it. Once your silhouette is complete, let's go to Photoshop Sketch. Open the app first, and you should see a plus button at the bottom right here, so start setting your canvas from here. It can be anything this time, so I'm just going to go with the vertical one or the iPad Pro one. The interface looks like this once you open your canvas. We have brushes and erasers on the left, and then layers on the right, along with export button at the upper right. The brush at the very bottom here is called a watercolor brush, and this is what we will use today. Choose any color, and I'm going to paint something here. It looks something like this. Can you see it well? It's got some smudges. The smudges are spraying here, can you see? Then when you choose a different color and place it on top of the base color, both colors are mixed with smudges spreading as you can see. This is pretty interesting, isn't it? There is this mark that looks kind of like cloves down here under the brushes, and this is the fan function. So when you tap it, it simulates light winds that help stop the smudges from spreading. So this icon means a fan. Let me tap it. It makes the sound of the shutter. And now smudges are no longer spreading. And so add another new color. Paint it over here and when you are happy with it, click on the fan mark to stop the smudging. Like so, keep painting and don't be shy about the smudging and you can stop them from spreading using the fan function. The watercolor smudges like the one I have can be done on Procreate. Photoshop Sketch is the only app you can do that for now. 
The app I talked about in the beginning, Adobe Fresco will have the same watercolor smudge feature, but how it works is basically the AI calculating and estimating the smudge level. So this is such an excellent feature only Adobe has in the apps. Since Fresco is not released yet, I will need to use a combination of Procreate and Photoshop Sketch. For instance, right now I have Procreate on the left and Photoshop Sketch on the right, and I will be mixing both later, but a tip here is to try and imagine the parts for each color you use according to the object, which is a seahorse this time. This makes it a lot easier to create your ideal design. Once you're done with coloring, we want to move the design from Photoshop Sketch to Procreate. When doing so, select the layer or color on Photoshop Sketch here, drag and drop to Procreate from right to left like so. This should then show you a plus button here, and now the data is important to Procreate. I haven't really seen anyone painting using two illustration apps like this, but you can create your canvas using multiple apps on the iPad. So remember that you don't need to stick to a single app only, and you can create your design like we did just now. Next, when you select the layer for color here, an option that says Clipping Mask will be displayed. Select Clipping Mask, which then colors only the seahorse silhouette. I will do it again. Here is the layer for color, and under that we have a layer for seahorse silhouette. Select the layer at the top and select Clipping Mask option to color the silhouette part only. You could adjust the position of this layer for colors by moving the arrow tool and by altering the shape later too. You could also copy this layer for colors and choose blend mode to express the object differently. So set the color here according to your preferences. This time I will be using overlay. Now I want to stylize this design more, so I'll be adding a new layer on top of the existing canvas and including some decorations here. The brush I'll use this time is called Flick from the Spray. I personally like this Flick brush and I use it very often and it's a brush that enables you to express the object in the form of splashes like this. So once you do that, you could play around with your blend mode here for the brush layer as it will reflect a different style and see which one you like. Regarding the color to use with this flick brush, I find it better to use a brighter color with saturation set high so it leaves stronger impressions. So we are almost done! It looks great with, you know, paint splash over the seahorse while still giving off the feeling of the surroundings being a body of water. And so yeah, we are almost done! At last, let's change the background. 
It's white or plain right now, but it'll look even better with the right texture or background behind the seahorse. So just pick anything white, possibly with some textures. I got mine from this website called Unsplash, but once selected, start importing. Adjust the size and place the background layer to the bottom. For the parts with color running over, change the order of layers or use clipping mats as mentioned earlier to make sure they fit perfectly within the seahorse. So make sure to make use of the clipping mask function whenever you need it. Alright, it's complete! I think it looks better to have a texture background which gives off a poster like looks. So make sure not to forget about the background once you're done painting as it really helps boost the level of your drawing. Okay, that's all for today. If you like this seahorse drawing, please give it a thumbs up. Also, for those who haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please hit the subscribe button down below. I plan on making some tutorial videos on Adobe Fresco once it's out, and so I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you for watching my video. Bye bye.